Coach, how do you bottle up that performance uh, moving forward and maintain the consistency with this with today? Well, first, I think you know. I think the important thing is to enjoy today. You know, I was emotional during the game and after the game because. They were playing with a sense of joyfulness, and um, you could just see it in the way that they were playing. And it wasn't just for when personally they made their play, it was when their teammates made a play. They were just as or even more excited and happy and joyful for their teammates. And I just think it's always a, a wonderful and beautiful trait to be able to celebrate other people's success. It really translated into how we shared the basketball. I think we had 17 assists. I thought it translated to us defensively, how I felt like we were really good defensively. And that would be nice if we could bottle it up. <laughs> but uh, I'm not, I'm just very thankful. I told them to enjoy today. It was, um, it was fun to have a front row seat to see them do that. And um, tomorrow we'll start our preparation on getting ready for a really, really good Miami team. Speaking of defense, the job that Leakey did on Hunter Tyson, two shot attempts, nothing in the second half. Yeah, Hunter's, I mean, he's, he's elite. I told the guys before, um, you know, before the game, not only is he running for ACC Player of the Year, he's a pro. He's just playing at an extremely high level. He's very competitive. He's And Leakey made one mistake on him. I was in the first half and went in underneath the screen, and that's when the three. Hunter hit the three. Other than that, and to be honest with you, uh, the only guy on the team that I felt like can consistently really defend him was Leakey. Uh, he was fantastic. Not only did he do a good job um, defending him in terms of his scoring, but he kept him off the free throw line. And so that just shows uh, how elite uh, leaky he is defensively, and also I thought he, he stayed disciplined. You know, he didn't go for steals. He, he you know, he, he stayed in between Hunter and the basket and stayed down on shot fakes and boxed him out. I thought, I thought he did a terrific job. Do you remember the response we've seen since the wave game? A lot of it seems player led, whether it be, you know, what Armando Baycott said to the team after that game, and then RJ told us he, he led a players only meeting. I mean, what is what does all that do for you, just to see your players respond like they have to that loss of weight? That doesn't today? surprise me at all. I mean, we're a team. This is a program. I mean, we're in this together. And, you know, all year I've talked to them about a hunger and thirst. All year I've talked to them about discipline and details. All year I've talked to them having a love for the game and um, for your teammates and for the, themselves. And, um also, uh, yesterday at practice, at times, I made um, some of the guys put on a 15-pound uh, um, heavy vest. And so throughout all the practice, they were trying to figure out why I was singling out certain players to practice with a 15-pound weighted vest. So you know, as I told you before, one of the things that I do is I require the guys to stop by the office in the summer, at least three times during the year because of school and stuff, at least once. So they thought that these guys forgot to stop by the office. And they were like, what's up with the weighted vest? And I told them, this is what we're playing with. And I said, you got to put that stuff down. And I said, all the noise from the phone, the family, the friends, you know, the fans, just just put the weight down. And I, you know, I said, I, I would like you to play a game without this weighted vest and just allow you to be able to play freely and have fun. And so the guys have you know met a number of times since we played Wake Forest and um, it showed in the way that they played together today. Was that weighted vest a, a Hubert Davis original? That kind of sounded like a Pat Riley tactic or something. Is that something that you took from uh, another coach? Or? <sighs> Coach Riley did a lot of stuff. <laughs> he did uh, that. That couldn't be a Coach Riley, but you know that's also Coach Smith too. But I just, I don't know. I just, you know, I'm a visual learner, and I was just thinking about something just to kind of give them a picture of what they were playing with, whether it's you know the beginning of the year, the expectations, uh, whatever it's the comments from 
the phone, the family, and the friends. Like, you can't play with that weight. You can, but you can't jump as high. You can't run as fast. You can't be as efficient. And uh, I just wanted them to play free. And uh, they played free tonight, and I'm just really proud of them. You speak so often about the consistency of your message to them. This was a little bit of a different tactic. Was the other night sort of the final straw where you realized you had to do something different, perhaps? I think that's consistent. I don't see I don't see that message being just because if you come at it a little different direction, but the but the message has always been consistent. Our closeness, our togetherness, our team, and focusing on this year's team to see how good we can become. How much does a healthy Puff Johnson giving you what he gave you the last two games now add to this team? What kind of element does that give you? Well, it's huge. I mean, because you know Puff. Because of his size, he's versatile. So he can play the small forward, power, power forward position. Um, he's a guy that uh, can stretch the floor. He can rebound. He's an excellent offensive rebounder. And so, and also when he gets a defensive rebound, he has the ability to bring up the ball and be able to make a play. And so, having him in the lineup and being able to plug him in, in many different ways, it's huge. And so. It hurts us when Puff is out of the rotation or, you know, he's injured. But when he's healthy and he's able to play, um, he gives us, you know, he gives us um, some really good minutes coming off the bench. When you look at a turnaround like Saturday to Monday, how much of an asset is it having an older team that even has experience playing in the tournament and playing on those quick turnarounds? Well, I don't, that's a great question. I mean, you know, it is what it is. At 7 p.m., we played Miami on Monday, so you know, I don't. You can say, okay, we have you know experience to be able to handle that, but they're older. Or you can say, ooh, we have freshmen, we got younger legs, and we won't be tired, and we still play on Monday. At the end of the day, we got an opportunity to play an unbelievable team on Monday. We played a really great team here today against Clemson, and. So we'll prepare tomorrow and put ourselves in a position to see if we can play well on Monday. You were 25 bench points today. Were you more inclined to go to the bench more often because of the short turnaround? No, I wasn't thinking about that. I was thinking about winning. Um, I, I was thinking about I wanted us to play well. I wanted us to win. So if that meant five guys would play 40 minutes, it is what it is. Um, this was an important game for us. and. Clemson was is such a good basketball team, we had to bring our best today. Hubert, when, when you said that you got emotional during the game, like was there a shot that went in or a moment that sort of that, that built you up to that emotional level? Like what, what got you there, do you think? It was midway through the first half, and we were just sharing the basketball, and then we got the ball. I think it was got the ball out of the post, but somehow it got to Kayla. Extra pass from RJ in the corner? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and the crowd was going crazy, and I just, and also the one with Caleb, in the, in, and Puff missed it, but he threw it to Puff in the corner. It was in the first half also. And I just, even Pete's miss in transition, he was running the floor. You know, I just was, and then the crowd, and uh, I was just really, really proud of him. I just, I like them. I like to see them having fun. I like them. I like to see them being celebrated and supported. And in that first half, I felt like they were having fun. They were being celebrated and supported. And I was really proud of them, and I really liked it. Caleb had 23 points. RJ 17. They uh, they got 19. I mean, big games for your, your three main guys. Was leading offensively, you thought clicked better to make see them make all those threes. That, to the ball going to hoop it was different? Well, I really think when you share the basketball, it puts yourself in a great position to be able to make those. You know, it just it just does. When you're sharing the basketball and it's good to great, when you're making the right play, when you play basketball the right way, more times than not, uh, there's going to be a benefit on that in terms of making shots. And I just... You know, at times they were double team in the post, and Armando has gotten better throughout the year at getting the ball out of the post when he's doubled. 
and they were just making the extra pass, and I just, you know, I don't think we can make 15 threes every night, but I do definitely think we can share the ball that way. And that gives us a chance to be able possibly to make 15 threes. You guys also uh, tied a season low, at, at least in ACC play, allowing just 22 points in the paint. Huh. What, what was wow. the difference defensively there? Well, we, we talked about it, you know, just, I can't remember the stats, like, in our losses, we allow almost 40 points in a paint. In our wins, we allow 31 points in a paint. So does that, you know, I'm not a big stat guy, but it does kind of paint a picture that when we allow teams to get to the basket, whether through post or penetration, off of ball screens, deep post catches, in transition, off turnovers, that we're just, we're not as good defensively. And uh, we talked about protecting the paint. We talked about defending without fouling because Clemson is an elite free throw shooting team. I felt like we did a really good job of that in the first half. The second half, I felt like we were putting them on the line too much, especially at the beginning of the second half. But again, I thought, thought it was really good. I thought we were really locked in defensively. When you when you go through your prep for Miami and you start like your messaging to these guys about playing them, do you even delve into playing Miami last year, how badly that went, or is that because it's different teams and everything, do you just stay away from things like that? I do stay away from that. You know. They're a different team. We're a different team. Um, plus, I don't want to talk about that game. Um, we weren't very good at that game. <laughs> and so I want to talk about happy things and good stuff. And so, um, but Miami is that good. They're one of the better teams in the country. They have um, tremendous athleticism and versatility and guys that uh, – Every year, they have guys that can go get a bucket <laughs> at any time. And so our defense will be tested, but they're also a really great defensive team. And so we're going to have to play another great game. But we're excited about the challenge.